Hi friends, it's Monica and today I'm going to be sharing some more anticipated reads of 2022. Looking back on my first anticipated reads video of this year, I have read a couple of books off that list and I think I read around 50% of those books and I'm still working on catching up on the ones that I have said that I really want to read. I am hoping to get to all of the books that I mentioned in these videos by the end of the year, but if that doesn't happen, that's okay. Anyways, onto this video. So all the books that I'm mentioning are book releases that are coming out in July to September. And I divided this video up into different genres. So I have my fantasy picks, some historical fiction books, as well as some romance books. Anyways, let's just get on to my first fantasy and most anticipated read. This book is The Dragon's Promise by Elizabeth Lim and it's the second book in the Six Crimson Cranes duology and it's the concluding book of this series and it's releasing August 30th. In the first book, Six Crimson Cranes, we're following Shiori, who is a crown princess of Kiara, and she has hidden magic, but once on her wedding day, that hidden magic is revealed. The opposing force of Shiori in the first book is her stepmother, who then transforms her six brothers into cranes and threatens if she speaks of this to anyone her brothers will die one by one. So like looking back onto the first book, Shiori does go through many trials and tribulations on her journey to try to rescue her brothers and try to figure out what the heck is going on in her kingdom. And I did recently read this book earlier this year, so I'm really, really excited for the sequel. I remember the writing being really easy to digest and it was really nice to learn about the new customs, culture, and food of this new world of Hiara. In the first book, they did emphasize on Shiori's power of which she has power over paper cranes and she also has more powers that goes into more detail in the book. But in the second book, The Dragon's Promise, I'm really excited because we're going to be learning more about the dragon kingdom that is also in this world. And we didn't really get to explore that in book one, so I'm really excited to figure out what is going to happen in this dragon kingdom that we are now going to be more exposed to. So I am really looking forward to how Shiori will then manage herself in this new location and how everything connects back to her own kingdom and how her magic is also coming into play here. My next anticipated book is Violet Made of Thorns by Gina Chen and this one is a YA fantasy debut and it's releasing July 26th. It's advertised as being great for fans of The Cruel Prince and Serpent and Dove both of those books which I've really enjoyed, although with Serpent and Dove, I've decided not to continue on with that series, but I think the Cruel Prince aspect is making me interested into this new book. So we have a morally gray witch, a cursed prince, and we have a prophecy that brings them together. So that sounds really, really good, but let's get into a little bit more details in that. Violet is a prophet and she is lying to the royal court about her supposed vision that she is having. However, with the Prince Cyrus being crowned really soon and he's planning to get rid of Violet's position at court. So with that, when the king approaches Violet and asks her to falsely prophesize about Cyrus's love story, Violet accidentally activates a curse. And this curse can either destroy or elevate the kingdom and it's all based on who Cyrus decides to marry. Violet herself also has a choice to make to either take control of her own destiny or go along with this new growing attraction between her and the prince and where that could lead her. So reminiscent of The Cruel Prince, there is really high stakes politicking in this book, as well as I'm sensing a love-hate situation between Violet and Cyrus, so that's always something I would look forward to in a book. Okay, so that one sounds really good. Moving on to my next anticipated read, and it's also another sequel or rather finale to a book series that I have been really anticipating, and it is The Kingdom of the Fear by Carrie Maniscalco. So this is the third and final book of the Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy, and it's releasing on September 27th. I won't say too much in case of spoilers, and if you haven't yet read the series, and the first book, Kingdom of the Wicked, is about twin sisters Victoria and Emilia, who are both witches in the 19th century Italy. But Victoria is unfortunately murdered, and in order to find out answers, 
Amelia summons one of the demon princes of hell, Wrath, and enlists his help in order to help solve her sister's murder. Amelia is a character who is headstrong, she's a little bit reckless, and she doesn't back down from a fight. I really enjoyed learning about the paranormal aspects of witches and demons in this book series, and in Kingdom of the Curse, the second book in the series is where things start to heat up between Amelia and Wrath which is something I think we're all been waiting for. <laughs> and with the concluding events of the second book, I'm really excited to see how things wrap up in this finale book and how Wrath and Amelia go about with their relationship. So if you do want a slow burn fantasy romance series that has witches, demons, and some magical curses, I would recommend you pick out this one. Okay, so my next fantasy pick is Belladonna by Adeline Grace, and this one's releasing August 30th. This book is following 19-year-old Signa Faro, whose life is in a repeat cycle of losing guardians while she is an orphan and she has some wealth attached to her name. The only relative Signa has is a family known as the Hawthorns, and this family is a bit eccentric and they're living in a gothic estate. So the Hawthorns, the patriarch, is constantly throwing wild parties. The son is trying to restore their family's reputation. The daughter is mysteriously ill, but then the wife of the Hawthorne family is actually dead. And when her spirit shows up to Signa and tells her that she's been murdered, things get a little bit weird. Signa understands that her relatives might need additional help and this is what drew me in into this book at first, is that Signa makes an ally with Death, who is in the form of a shadow who is always nearby her. So I'm assuming Signa has a personal connection that she forged with Death or something in the past made that connection happen. But this connection might be somewhat dangerous, not only for her own well-being, but also for her heart. So. I'm really interested to see where that goes. I'm hoping for a bit of Addie LaRue making a deal with a devil situation with Signa and Death in this book, but let's see how that plays out once I get to it. Okay, moving on from my fantasy books to historical fiction. I did want to continue exploring the historical fiction genre, and this one is called The Many Daughters of Afong Moy by Jamie Ford, and it's releasing on August 2nd. His blurb says it's a powerful explanation of the love that binds one family across the generations, which does have themes I enjoy reading about, which are love, family, and the connections that transcend time. So looking at the description itself, this book speaks a lot on intergenerational trauma, and it's from the perspective of a Chinese woman who's living in America. So Dorothy Moy is a poet who channels her mental health struggles through her artwork. But when Dorothy's five-year-old daughter starts exhibiting the same symptoms that Dorothy herself has, Dorothy gets a little bit concerned for her daughter's health and well-being in the future, so she seeks uh, professional help. This is where the historical fiction aspect comes into play, and through an experimental treatment, it leads Dorothy to learn about her ancestors. But when the past starts leaking into her present life, Dorothy realizes that in all these past lives of her ancestors, there's a stranger that pops up in each lifetime who is trying to find Dorothy or rather find her ancestors. And this person is someone who has loved her in her genetic memories. And that specific concept reminds me of the Assassin's Creed video games where the character in the video games gets the chance to relive their ancestral memories through their DNA. So I think this one does speak really well on intergenerational trauma and healing from those wounds and also exploring the personal traumas of Dorothy's life and trying to prevent the mental health struggles of Dorothy that she does not want to be passed on to her daughter or just try to get her daughter the help that she needs. So this is a very interesting premise and I'm really excited to see how it, I like it. So this next book is from Taylor Jenkins Reid. It's her latest book and it is called Carrie Soto is Back. And this one's also releasing on August 30th. This book is about a tennis player, Carrie Soto, and she does have a personal connection back to Malibu Rising, but she's, I don't think she's a major player in Malibu Rising, but she does have 
a small like name drop in Malibu Rising, which I do like. So Carrie's story starts off with her being a world famous tennis player and she retires after winning 20 Grand Slams and breaking several world records. And in order to even gain that fame as being a legendary athlete, she had to make many, many sacrifices in her life. But during the 1994 US Grand Slam, Carrie Soto is in the stands or the audience watching the match and she watches a brutal new tennis player break her record. This instance in the stands of watching someone break her record brings Carrie out of her retirement and now she's 37 years old and she's trying to train back up and she's wanting to regain that record title. Carrie isn't as young as she used to be and although she will struggle to try to regain her athletic ability and grace as her younger self. She's not only training to prove something for the world, but she's also trying to prove something within herself. And there is like an emotional journey in that. With Taylor Jenker Reid's books, I'm really looking forward to this one and seeing how the tennis world is like since I am not familiar with sports. My last category is romance books. I recently read The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood and she has a new book coming out and it is called Love on the Brain and it's releasing on August 23rd. So this romance is now between B and Levi. So B is the lead on a neuro engineering project at NASA, which is one of her dreams come true. But on this project, she has to co-lead with someone named Levi. And Levi Ward, he's tall, dark, and handsome, and really someone that B herself is attracted to. However, they are old arch nemesis from grad school, and from the words of Levi, he much rather not have them work at all together. When B's equipment starts going missing and her co-workers or the staff themselves ignore her, she finds an unexpected ally through Levi. And I think the romance just kicks off from there. So I really do like reading these STEM romances that I don't see much around in the romance book sphere. And I'm really liking how Ali Hizawa continues to bring this type of romance. And I really can't wait to read this one. So my next romance pick, so this title really drew me in and it's The Boy with a Book Story by Sarah Ekavare Smith. And this one is releasing on September 6th. So the romance in this book is between a Filipino bakery owner and a bookstore owner. This bookshop owner is a bit more stubborn than what Joelle imagined in her dreams. So Joelle, our baker, has a long time standing crush on Max, the bookshop owner, for a little bit over a year and a half now. And for all this time, she has been admiring him from afar. So when their building that both of their stores are housed in are slated to go under huge renovations, Joelle comes up with the idea to temporarily combine their shops together. And this might be a way into forming a potential relationship with Max. But compared to her fantasies, the reality is not something that she thought it would be like. And Joelle is kind of surprised at how Max is actually is as a person but i do sense a bit of reluctant love interest and like really enthusiastic heroine romance going on here and i'm really excited to read about that i just hope this one won't disappoint me as i recently read a romance book um people we meet on vacation by emily henry and and the main couple in that book had like a grumpy love interest and we had a bright and bubbly heroine as well and their chemistry did fall a bit flat for me but i do have high hopes for the boy with the bookstore so those are all the books i'm really excited for these next three months coming up and i really hope i get to all of them thank you so much for watching i hope you all had a good one don't forget to give me a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads i'll see y'all soon